Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawa Yala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Tonight, we're going into a brief lesson concerning the Feast of Tabernacles and the changing of seasons. Um, as you know that this time of the year is known as fall and this is actually a time in which there will be a harvest okay what's known as the fall harvest or the in gathering and so as we understand from the bible that these um high holy days are seasonally based for different times for different seasons and for different purposes and it's also for us to reflect on the meaning behind you know these particular high holy days uh, now, we know that some brothers and sisters uh, may not be fortunate enough to be able to make this a holy convocation or a work, a day in which no work will be done therein. And so we have to understand is that we are in the land of our captivity. Um, if you're able to do it, you should try your best to take those that time off and make it a solemn assembly and a holy convocation uh, to observe the this particular high holy day or any other high holy days as well uh, we know that being in these last days and being in the captivity that we've been in um, for generations being scattered out of our homeland uh, for thousands of years um, that you know a lot of our understanding of things has you know gone away especially when you're considering western education and how it removes many of the understanding in the scriptures from us because this book was given specifically uh, for our learning okay this is a book that was given and shown unto the Israelites okay and the prophets and the priests and the wise men were the ones that taught out of those things generation to generation and unfortunately it came a point where you know our people were hardening their hearts and they were no longer listening to them and we're now in the condition we are in today due to that rebelliousness so we have to think about what it is that the most high is trying to speak to us in these scriptures in these last days as we see that the day of the lord is approaching so as you know this is an eight day feast the first day is a holy convocation and the eighth day is a holy convocation okay and we are also noticing of course a change in the weather okay and this is something that we have to understand when it comes to seasons is that the most high is very deliberate in how he does things now um as far as on this part of the earth you know north america um there's an experience of a changing in the season in fact this morning when i woke up and i went to work it was cold it was noticeably much colder than it was on other days and even the high was 
20 something degrees lower than it was in previous days and this is an indication of the changing due to the moon cycle itself and as you know on the 15th day there will be a what is known as a full moon okay and this signifies to, for us not only the feast day because remember when you're going out and you're you're keeping the feast you're going to have the illumination of the moon um, over the people and a feast commemorated uh, in that particular time and season okay which is something that I want to go into based off of the article that I just read earlier today so when you see here this article was published earlier today it says October's full moon is also a super moon here's when you can see it so in the article they go into the super moon and about when you can see it which we'll go ahead and go down it says when and where you can see the hunter's moon now this is known as the hunter's moon and we'll break down why it's called that the hunter's moon will rise thursday october 17th in the eastern sky around sunset although it will reach peak illumination at 726 eastern so basically they are showing you that the peak illumination which will be the fullness of the moon will be in the morning okay and other articles will tell you thursday october 17th 7 26 eastern time okay and um you can actually see the moon now of course but the peak illumination of it will be around that time okay when you wake up in the morning now it says here that the moon will be below the horizon at that time so wait until sunset to watch it rise and take its place in the sky the fa old farmer's almanac says now why is it called this hunter's moon and you see here you got a picture it says here the beauty of the hunter's moon competes with the fall color on a red maple at the louisville zoo october 24th 2018. now it says october's full moon is called the hunter's moon because it is the time of year okay the time of year because the time of year this is fall okay that's the time of the year that we're in the time of the year when historically hunters began collecting food and storing it for the long cold winter months ahead and that's the reason why it's also known as the feast of in gathering because this is when you would gather okay your crops that have been growing and they've now you're harvesting them and storing them preparing them for the winter okay now because we're in um a modern world an industrial age a modern society quote unquote where most people do not own land do not farm do not till we're so accustomed to going to the store and buying our food so we don't even think about having the store for winter because we're under the expectation that due to industrialization and due to modernization modernity we're just gonna simply go to the store and get our food and replenish whatever it is that we don't have okay but when we have land if we have to operate differently the lord willing we're of the elect and will have you know the land that was promised to our forefathers that we'll be able to see these things happen on a regular basis and us knowing that we own this and no one else is going to take it from us okay and that's going to be a beautiful thing on that day so when you go further on it says many moons ago native americans named this bright moon for obvious reasons the almanac said the leaves are falling from trees the deer are fattened and it's time to begin storing up meat for the long winter ahead okay and that's what they would do in fact um you have hunting seasons as well so around this time this would be a time when people would go out and they would begin hunting such as hunting deer okay and the native americans as you know the tribe of gad they would go around and they would basically follow the deer and they would basically at this time of year they would be taking down deer which of course was um you know a good source of animal protein of course you had buffalo as well 
um, and they would basically take it. And as you know, um, they have ways of storing meat for a long period of time through uh, drying methods, okay? This is where jerky comes into play, where you can basically dry it up and store it uh, for the winter. So that way you'd have enough that you can feed you yourself and of course your family and those around you. Okay, so understanding seasons helps you prepare for survival. And that's one of the reasons why the Most High made these feast, these festival days and these high holy days important to us because it made us a people that were always prepared for what was to come next. And this is actually a part of a nation's survival. Okay, other nations had their own ways and what they did is they had some of this, they celebrated things that were around the same time. However, they were pagan origins to what they celebrated. The difference is, is that we were giving glory to the most high God of heaven and earth. That's the difference. And we didn't have any wicked customs um, that were associated with these high holy days like the other nations. They had their wicked customs assigned to it. Okay, so when we look at this, we look at the angle of the Feast of Tabernacles as something dealing with our survival as a people and also commemorating that what how the Most High, you know, dealt with us and our ancestors. Okay. In fact, um, I'm going to go back to that Leviticus because there was actually more on there. So we'll just go to verse 37. We'll just read on down. These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings every thing upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows and beside all your free will offerings which ye give unto Yahweh. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, which you just read in the article, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Okay, so the Most High caused us to dwell in booths when we left the land of Egypt. As you know, we were in the wilderness for 40 years. Okay, our forefathers were in the wilderness for 40 years dwelling in booths. They did not have uh, regular built homes. Okay, meaning um, you could say stolid stone homes. Okay, homes made of wood. They were tents. Okay, and so that's how we dwelt during that time. And that's how much of the, uh, especially the tribe of Gad, I mean, they kept a lot of different feasts even um there was remnants of them that even still had the name this is well documented we've actually done lessons of this um where the name was found among them um we also see that they had a lot of different customs that went back to the scriptures okay including you know dwelling in tents as well okay so or as they call it in this scriptures boots now we're gonna go ahead and go back okay to the article and as you see here they talk about 
the weather. Okay, the weather changing up there in Rochester, New York. Now, um, as you see here, when it comes to this particular supermoon, what makes it different is that the size is going to appear 7% bigger and about 15% brighter than a typical full moon because the moon is orbiting and it's closer to the earth. So we're going to see it as appearing bigger than usual. Okay, it did not it did not grow in size. <laughs> you know, yet we have a lot of people that um have a weird way of looking at celestial bodies and the way the earth is and in the, the you know, uh the sun and the moon. So, you know, we don't want to kind of go down that rabbit hole, but it, that's why it says on that it'll appear okay on average seven percent bigger and 15 percent brighter it doesn't mean it grew okay so let's go ahead and go into this this is genesis chapter 1 and verse 13 and the evening and the morning were the third day and god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years okay so this is for signs and for seasons okay so the full moon at this time and the season that we're in which is fall that's why the most high created that so that way you would know okay and they would know when this full moon came in and they saw the changing of the weather they knew that this was indeed a fall and the time of ingathering of course you'd also see other signs of that in the earth such as the changing of the colors of the leaves okay um and you would see them turning different colors and begin to fall off the tree also you have certain fruits that um certain you know crops and fruits that would also fall you'd have things that would fall off the tree and that would be gathered okay you would have certain crops that you would be gathered remember that last year we talked about about the uh, grapes okay being gathered so certain things certain uh fruits for certain seasons you will be dealing with at this particular time and so that's what we're commemorating is this uh, is this time and season uh that we're entering into in addition to that what we do know is that eventually we're looking for deliverance so we're going to go ahead and read this in judges chapter 5 and verse 11 they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the place of drawing water there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of yahweh even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in israel then shall the people of yahweh go down to the gates so hopefully you know this was edifying to you brothers and sisters and again i want to give all glory and praises to our heavenly father yahweh and we do so in the name of our lord and savior yahweh shai grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth shalom